Coach, we'll turn it over to you for opening comment. Um, you know, great, great win for us. I'm really proud of our guys' effort out of the gate. Um, we knew defensively we could give uh, Grambling some problems, and um, you know we were a little worried about it being a trap game after a big win the other night. Looking forward maybe to to Paul on Thursday, but for our guys were focused defensively. Um, we we really shared the ball offensively, especially in the first half. You know, and, and we've never had a big lead like that at halftime. We challenged our guys um, to compete against ourselves with our discipline, with our togetherness. Um, and maintain that focus, and I, I tip my hat to Grambling. They pinned their ears back the second half and were the aggressor, um, you know, and they played much better. Um, but it was a good learning lesson for us, and, you know, um, happy, happy, obviously, with the outcome. Of course. Um, Gary, can you just talk about what it, what it means to you setting the, getting the second triple-double in front of our history, the second year dad? What was his stat line? I know it wasn't, he wasn't leading us. He was steals. He was steals, 26 assists. He was 20 points, 14 rebounds, and 11 assists. In a win? In a loss. He had a rebound? Oh, he had a rebound? Okay. Yeah, he had a rebound. Yeah, I just mean a lot, but I just thank my teammates and the staff for uh, letting me get there, especially my teammates. Gary, can you just talk about how those last couple minutes played out? Were you aware that you were, you were close? Yeah, eventually I was about five minutes left. I was in the coach and the guy coached me back in for a couple more minutes. And uh, that man right there, number four. And, and of course, everybody else in the locker room is just, I'm just blessed to get the job. Did, uh, did someone mention it to you, the stat line that you had, or how did you become aware? Yeah, one of the coaches, one of the coaches just said, you just need two. And uh, just set the record. So it was, I really wasn't keying on that, I was just letting there run the offense. Same I coach told me that with about seven to go and he almost got his head bit off because we're looking at the differential and, and I've been in that situation before and I've never put a guy back in, you know, when we've got that kind of lead. Um, and the only reason that we thought that this was different was the fact that it was two assists and not necessarily two or four points. Um, and and, and the, the, the overwhelming part was that it was his father and the only one, you know, that, that's had one. I thought that is something a father and son can share that will live in Oregon State history. I thought it was too big uh, to not give that an opportunity. And we almost, we gave him a few minutes there. We almost pulled him, you know, and, and uh, I, I'm sure their coaching staff will understand because it was a, a team type stat assist, you know, that we weren't trying to, you know, <coughs> You know, be classless or whatever you want to call it, um, and then because that was not the, the deal. It was only because it was his father. You know, if it was Lamar Hurts, all right, we wouldn't have put him back in. I don't know that he scored enough to get a triple though. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys were walking to the sideline after you were pulled, did you say something to Victor, maybe thanking him for helping you get that? Oh uh, yeah, uh, everybody was just you know that last pass was kind of iffy, and I you think he caught it. Give a lot of kudos to him. And of course, that's my teammate. His dad. His dad, yeah. Gary, were you aware before tonight that your dad had the only triple double in school history? Yeah, I was aware. A couple games ago, I almost got there. I was a couple assists short. But uh, I really didn't think about it. I just got to play the way you know how to play, and uh, it happened. Has your dad texted you, called or said anything to you? I'm pretty sure he has. I haven't checked the phone yet. I heard he tweeted something when it happened, so um, I'm sure he's aware. Coach, you mentioned this in your initial statement, but you know, holding Grambling State to just nine points in the first half, defensively, what was working for you guys tonight? Um, you know, we started out in our normal changing D zone, and then um, one adjustment dumb coach made in practice, um, our guys didn't uh, pick up on very well. So then we just went exclusively man. Um, they, they, they had a certain offensive set, and we were supposed to switch into something else when that happened. And, so there was a couple of, of possessions where our, our guys were confused. And, and mostly because we honestly lacked communication out there. So then we just simplified it and we said straight man for the rest of the game. And it was good because we haven't played a lot of man to man so it was good for us to get some work. Um, but guys were flying around, communicating, um, challenging shots, not allowing anything easy at the rim. 
um, you know, and, and you know they missed some shots they probably normally make. Uh, so it was a it was a great half of basketball defensively. I thought. Jake, you put together a, a pretty good night. What was uh, working well for you? Um, just coming out, like I said, <clears throat> it was just coming out with energy, not really worrying about oh I got to score points and get rebounds. Just coming out there and just playing basketball. Just me and Coach Chicken talk about it. Just good, like people we we got like what we call it feeling what he's saying, and that's where we've been going, and so far it's been working. When did you guys talk about that, was that after the Portland game? Or? That's been all season. We got to just buy in what he's talking about. <laughs> um, just listen to Coach Tinkle, and know he's, he's the man, he's the coach, and just buy into that, and that's what's been happening. And it's been working around for everyone, so. Vic's, Vic's had some really good spurts for us in games, and, you know, he, he'll be the first one to tell you that, He's. I always joke with him. Today we were joking again. Vic, are you here? Are you in the locker? Do you come out tonight? Because you know sometimes, sometimes uh, he doesn't have the same focus in practice consistently or in games. And when he's energetic and when he's focused and communicating, he plays at such a high level. You know, and, and this is the first time he's getting consistent playing time. So it's just something that a guy that doesn't have a ton of experience from the past is learning. But. I always love love the smile on his face um, and what he brings when when he's dialed in. You guys are six and zero, Gil. I mean, what's clicking for you guys at home? You mentioned it, the defense. Our guys are really buying into the defensive end. Um, you know, people can talk about who we're playing or where we're playing and all that, but that's been the one constant. I think that you can't argue. Our guys have been defending, um, and if we hang our hat on that and, and continue to rebound. No, we haven't had great shooting nights tonight. We shot a little bit better, but that's what's gotten us by, defending and, and rebounding and really staying together. And I credit the guys. They, I said it a while ago. Our coaching staff, I mean, we just we just come to work. We're not sprinkling pixie dust or waving. I mean, we challenge these guys to play hard and stay together. It's pretty simple. All the credit goes to them because they're they're buying into it and they're bringing it each game. You guys have a, kind of a pretty tough DePaul team kind of looming. What's going to be the key? Uh, just to stay focused, uh, we're gonna we're gonna give the guys tomorrow off because um, we've got so many games in a short span. You know, we just played Saturday, play tomorrow, uh, play tonight, play Thursday, go on the road, play again, and so we've got some guys that need to rest up. Um, but then we'll get back into it on Wednesday, and it's gonna be all about defending, rebounding, being the more physical group, uh, and then we'll take it from there. We've got a long way to go. I mean, we're happy to be where we're at. Love the fact that we've been protecting uh, at home court, you know. But we also know that if, if we if we get off page, how quickly we can slip, and so that's the deal. We got to stay together and make sure we keep our eye on the prize, and that's getting better a little bit each and every day. Malcolm had a pretty good performance. Started started hot. What was what did you kind of notice from him? Part say that again. Malcolm sorry. started hot. What was kind of the key to his hot? You know, he hit his first couple of shots. Um, you know, I thought he got his feet set. He was ready. The guys found him. He had wide open looks. And when that first one goes in, when you've been struggling a little bit, um, you know, it's like a ton of weight, you know, being dropped off your shoulders. And he made good decisions and took good shots. I mean, you know, when you take good shots, you're going to shoot a better percentage. And we got one or two other guys that we need that to happen for. Get a couple early baskets so they can relax a little bit. And that was the case for Vicky. Came in, took good looks. Guys found him. Shot him in rhythm, and from there it's it snowballs. Now we got to get to where we're predicating everything off of our defense in the glass. But it was nice to see. I tell you, he, he, I don't know that there's been anybody the last week and a half, two weeks, that have gotten more shots up before practice or after practice, and it's paid off in practice. And so it's no surprise to us that he shot good from the perimeter tonight. Keep it up. Was it kind of nice to get to walk on some more runs tonight? Yes. It was. Is there a but following that? No, no. Um, I was just, my mind was <laughs> spinning. Um, it was great because they worked their tails off, you know, and, and uh, I'm proud of these guys for earning those guys, those, you know, the opportunity to play. Um, they were a little nervous, obviously, um, but you know what? It's great to reward them a little bit. And a couple of them are probably at some point going to have to figure into our rotation when we get into league, you know, as we start to mount more games under our belt. So, I, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty, but they were competing and they were probably surprised that they were in a game because they hadn't played in a while. So it was, it was neat because those guys worked, like I said, they worked their tails off, you know, in school, in practice, 
it's nice to get that reward for them. So again, tip my hat to to the top seven eight guys to get them that opportunity. Victor, has there been a particular reason why you maybe take two more shots before and after practice? Or um, no, just really after a couple of games, I go up and down like you said. I haven't been consistent, and when we have a bad game, we really want to shoot a lot of shots. So that's mainly been a reason. So I just gotta keep it up. But not only when I have a bad game, <laughs> so that's basically been a reason. Just I'm just getting frustrated sometimes when I go up and down and just trying to stay at a more consistent pace. Vic, can you talk about the differences between last year's team and this year's team, and uh, just like the culture and what's happening on the floor a little bit too? Um, the one thing I just love is just the intensity at, at practice and like everybody wanting to really play hard on defense. Um, last year we really didn't. I don't feel like we had the same intensity on defense. We scored a lot of points. That's what we did, but we also gave up a lot of points. So this year, that's really been reversed. We need to just coach telling us just feed into what he's saying every day. Every day at practice, he's coming to work hard, and it's been carrying over to the games. So that's probably the main thing from last year.